BioBalance HealthCast episode 193, Myths of Testosterone Replacement for Women, part three. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Uh, Dr. Maupin and I are going to be sharing another in a series that we've been doing about the myths of testosterone replacement. And this one, uh, I, I think a lot of people will find interesting because it's a thing that that people constantly obsess about in the United States, and that's the issue of weight and being <laughs> overweight. And we we worry about things that we might do that that cause us to become or remain overweight. And one of the things they say is if you replace your testosterone, that'll make you fat. Uh, and that's simply not true. No, it it's, is, quite it's, the, it's quite the opposite. But, but weight and weight gain and the issue of testosterone are interrelated and because the myth is they'll make you fat, but the reality is it will help you lose weight. Right, uh, right. and it improves your... Imp- or, or it will help you lose fat. Right, it helps not you necessarily lean, lose weight. lean down. Yes. And the fact is is that we, we always are worrying about our gravity, Okay, gravity meaning we get on the scale, and gravity is how much gravity we have, how much we weigh. Mm -hmm. When in fact, what we should be worrying about is how big we are, how big our waistline is, how big our surface area is, because that is much more a sign of us actually being unhealthy. Fat makes us fat big, and lots of muscle makes us heavier. Lots of bone makes us heavier. So if someone says to me, many of these myths came from my frequently asked questions, Mm -hmm. both the ones that I have on my on the website and the ones that patients ask me all the time, or say, like they always come back in January and say, "Well, the testosterone made me fat this time," and I'm like, "It was Christmas. It was New Year's. You ate a lot at New Year's and Christmas. People don't seem to keep to their usual dietary standards then." But they always want to find a reason Mm -hmm. that they gained weight. So I have them measure their waistline and follow that instead of the gravity of their body. Because testosterone gets rid of fat and increases muscle mass and increases bone mass, both of which are heavier. So that makes you smaller. Right. But maybe the same weight. Nuts because (laughs) her dress size or pants size is shrinking. Right, but her weight when she gets on the scale is not, and she says it's this not about is not gravity. Working, and, and I said, let me talk to you about the myths of fat. <laughs> <laughs> but truly, I mean, when I first start, I had gained so much weight when I had gone through, and th- this happens when you go through menopause. When women go through menopause, or men go through andropause, they actually lose testosterone, Mm -hmm. lose estrogen, and then they gain a lot of fat because they become insulin resistant. Their insulin doesn't work well at metabolizing sugar, and they they also slow down, get tired, and don't work out. They're less motivated. So those several factors do attribute, are attributed to menopause or loss of testosterone. But giving it back doesn't make you gain weight. It makes you lose fat. Fat is less dense than muscle. It's like which is heavier, a pound of feathers or a pound of steel. They're both a pound, but, but the volume. But the volume. Is so you so a muscle at, is, a pound of muscle, if you look at a pound of steak, it's small. Right. And if you look at a pound of fat, if you've ever seen those... those Buttery uh, mashed potatoes with gravy. <clears throat> yeah. They're, it's yeah, light, it's a fill a but it's, it, it's, a, it's a pound, but it's yeah. big. Right. So generally, when I, when I first started losing fat... I started losing size, yeah. which was awesome because then my clothes started fitting, and, right. and and that is what you're looking for. But I was kind of disturbed because I didn't lose weight. But in fact, my bones got thicker, right. my bone density and was healthier. better, right. and I was healthier, and I had much more muscle. And at one point, at about 9 to 12 months, mm-hmm. I woke up and I was warm, like I had burned calories all night. Mm-hmm. And that's a function of testosterone. You get enough muscle... And then you're burning calories all the time, then it's much easier to keep your weight off. So large muscle mass increases your ability to lose fat because you're burning calories and to actually burn off what you eat. But but there's an adjustment time. Yeah. I mean, when somebody first begins to get testosterone replacement, they begin to develop lean muscles and stronger bones, which doesn't drop your weight. No, it's just a trade-off. But it changes your volume. 
Yeah, it changes your size. Yeah. So there, there are some people who, no matter what we do with testosterone, they have a genetic reason for making estrogen out of it. Mm-hmm. So in those particular people, we assist them to shut that system down. That's a genetic thing. So if somebody comes back and has gained belly fat, then we know that they've got an enzymatic problem, and then we deal with that. So but you it were, isn't with it isn't with most people. You were telling me that about a, <clears throat> a doctor that you are friends with who works here in St. Louis, is special an endocrinologist mm-hmm. who specializes in this stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and weight loss, not not hormone replacement, but weight right. loss. Right, but he gives people something to jack up their metabolism and to jack up their thyroid. Right. To keep them both high. And you were explaining there's a cycle. And to give to give him credit, it's Dr. Cunningham. And he has he ha, he is now specializing in weight loss. Mm-hmm. And what he does is his he believes that we're we were all and I I agree, we were all made to survive being um hunters and gatherers way back when, you know, the Adam and Eve. So we had to survive that period. We were meant for that. We were made for that. Where we exercise, he said, 16 miles a day looking for food and and gathering it so that we could bring it back to the the group of people we lived with and feed everybody. So we were meant to to work out a lot most of our day and we were also meant we were also meant to be able to handle uh, famine and to handle plenty. And so if you're a food, if you're a you're a hunter gatherer and you have a lot to eat, you gain a lot of fat because you actually have your insulin your insulin stimulated and you need to save that fat so that you can survive your your starvation state. So what your right. body does is when you're starving, it shuts down its ability to burn calories. Okay? So when we diet we decrease our calories, and then we can't burn our calories. Mm-hmm. We can't burn anything, so our body goes into like a hibernation. That helped us survive a long time ago. And then when we eat more, then we burn more calories. That is a function of thyroid. The thyroid T3 goes up and down to help us maintain calories or survive a famine. But and he, he fights that. So he changes it. For urban man, we are removed to a very large degree, from the natural rhythms of the earth. I mean, yeah. we don't experience weather in the same way no. that primitive societies Mm-mm. experience weather. And and the impact on our crop growth cycles of weather, mm-hmm. we we can trade off because we can go down to the grocery store and buy fruit from Chile in December. <laughs> right. And so we can offset, or we have air conditioning that keeps us in, and we're not out in the heat sweating and melting off pounds. We crank it up cooler, open a Diet Coke, and eat a candy bar. <laughs> And and so sadly, <laughs> we, we but we those things impact our natural natural in the sense of the way man evolved over centuries mm-hmm. uh, response to the food cycle and mm-hmm. and weight and so, so many to, of us are obese partly because we're removed from the impact of weather right and partly because and we never have our famine <laughs> economies have adjusted in food production and distribution you know canned goods that can stay in the basement for 25 years mm-hmm. and still be edible so we're never put, starving truly unless right, we we're don't dieting. go through those natural rhythms so when we start to diet and we shut down our calorie intake our mm-hmm. body shuts down too mm-hmm. so he he fights that by Having you take an amphetamine that st- stimulates your right. uh, your metabolism while you take an increasing amount of thyroid T3, mm-hmm. and he does this very safely and very effectively, and he, in that way he actually counteracts the body's normal rhythm to shut its metabolism down when starving or increase the metabolism when eating, and so he, he actually fights both of those to increase the calories being burned. He also encourages ac- activity sure. and exercise, which, of course, we all do. But this is very effective because... <laughs> we all say we do. He's, he's gone to the... Um, speak for yourself. He's gone, he's gone to the primary metabolism and physiology of man and brought it to today's right. today's situation where... We don't have that same issue, so our bodies just keep adding fat and adding fat and adding fat. Even if we starve, we conserve our fat. Well, but some of that is the vicious cycle of the food production system. When you put high uh, 
fructose corn syrup mm-hmm. in everything that we eat, then we are consuming uh, calories and sugars that affect our insulin absorption, mm-hmm. which affect our starvation cycle, mm-hmm. which send the signals to say eat more stuff. And the more stuff we eat has more sugar in it, which infects the Increases insulin. Increases the insulin. Which just becomes a vicious cycle to say more, more, more. And we put on weight and we get fat. And at a certain point in gaining weight, mm-hmm. then you have a larger body to provide food for. Mm-hmm. Okay. And as you eat sugar, you have an excessive amount of insulin. Well, what right. insulin does is insulin t- carries or piggybacks blood sugar into the cell. Okay. So as our insulin rises and we have an, we have, we're exposed to all this insulin all the time because mm-hmm. most of us stop, never stop eating. So we have all of this insulin and stimulated more by sugary stuff and breads right. than anything else. The insulin tries to get into the cell, but we become insulin resistant, which is a pre-diabetic state. So we eat, we make a lot of insulin, we can't carry the blood sugar into the cell, so the cell can't make energy, it can't repair itself, it can't burn calories, and so we have all of this, we have all this blood sugar in our body, we store it as fat. So, so that's the problem. We keep, we keep going into this cycle, and one of the things that makes it worse is aging and losing testosterone. Right. So the way I break the cycle, unlike Dr. Cunningham, is right. I break the cycle by giving people their testosterone back, their estrogen back, right. and discussing diet and exercise with them and making sure their thyroid's working. Mm-hmm. So we have a different approach, but we still are looking for making people leaner. So you're trying to find a balance point that will offset the impact of urban living. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when we live in, because we're not going to go live out in the country as a hunter gatherer and walk 16 miles a day every single day looking for whole grains and nuts and. Well, society and meat. didn't progress very well when we were doing that because no, 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 we spent all a, our time doing that. It's a function of reality. Yeah. We live in a world that offers us these wonderful things, but it comes at a, at a biological cost. Yeah. And so how are we going to live in this world in a way that is healthier? And so you talk about replacing testosterone, which increases lean muscle mass and bone strength Mm -hmm. uh, and energy levels, Mm -hmm. but also then be conscious of your lifestyle choices. You know, are you drinking a bottle of wine every day? Are you eating uh, a cake uh, every day or sweets for breakfast? Are you eating carbs? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the the diet issues that are out there, the Mediterranean diet, uh, a low-carb diet, a low-fat diet, the food pyramid. Pretty much whole foods. Yeah, I mean, so. And fish and cheese and uh, milk products. And and there's an argument about dairy. How much dairy should you eat in our. uh, There's an argument about almost everything in our diet. Yes. And there's an opinion about it, but. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, it has to do with how do you want to get to lean, healthy. Okay. And basically, you have to eat whole foods. Okay, you so have explain have what you mean by whole, whole foods. Whole foods meaning you don't open a bag to eat it, and you don't un- unpeel something and stick it in the microwave. Right. You actually have potatoes, and you actually have cantaloupe, and you actually have strawberries, or a whole... Dark green whole, leafy vegetables. Yeah, or kale, whole... Kale, spinach. Nutty kind of bread, mm-hmm. but... You don't eat a bunch of it. You eat one slice of it at a meal. You don't eat mm-hmm. two or three. And lots of green, healthy foods. Like we have a little garden in the summer, and we always go out and just trim our lettuce off or our peppers or mm-hmm. things like that, which is a lot of fun. doesn't take a lot of work. And if we can keep the bunnies out of it. Mm-hmm. So we <laughs> so, but we, so you eat more bunnies is what you're telling yeah, us. <laughs> no, no, they just keep multiplying. So we have – but we, we do that because – that has all the enzymes and vitamins that, that we cook out of it. Mm-hmm. It's better to steam than to soak something in water. It's better to eat frozen, which still has those enzymes and all those those um, nutrients in it, than canned because that's been cooked out or right. soaked out. So, so prepared and prepackaged pre- foods are not the way to go. Absolutely not. And I'm not saying if, I never eat you those. Can. No. I'm just saying you should eat as little as possible. Mm-hmm. And those are the things that really cause us to gain fat immediately. Carbohydrates were meant for exercise. Well, they were meant for us running and exercising. That's what they do. They give you energy. Mm-hmm. And if you don't run and exercise, they make fat. So when you look at your next 
three pieces of bread or or donut, then you might as well just put fat on, so, on your hips. So when you, yeah, I used to tell people that all the time. You might as well just take that and slam it on your hips and bypass. Skip the one whole, step. <laughs> yeah, uh, but if you've got like a 13 year old son who's growing like a weed and mm-hmm. trying to put on weight so that he can wrestle in the in the next weight class. Uh, and he's trying to eat a lot of carbs, you know, you fill him up mm-hmm. with those. That's one thing. But you've got a 65-year-old man, he doesn't need a lot of carbs. He needs less. We have to change how we eat as we get older. And one of the things that we have to change is portion size. Right. You know, we have Absolutely. to be conscious of how much food we're putting in our body. And, and part of that's that vicious cycle. If we're eating a lot of sugars, then we experience hunger more regularly, mm-hmm. more consistently. And if we eat healthy in terms of portion size, but also in terms of content, mm-hmm. if we're eating seven ounces of protein and, and five ounces of fresh fruit and four ounces of green leafy vegetables, if you become aware of those mm-hmm. things and eat at that volume, what happens is you don't get hungry. I mean, it's really a fascinating thing, and you don't get hungry because you're reducing the sugar content. The, the one thing that I see... Um that actually is a roadblock to many of my patients when I talk to them about food is that <clears throat> they can't go two weeks without eating simple sugars. Mm-hmm. If you could go two weeks without eating any simple sugars, and that includes wine and alcohol, right. then you can clean your body out, you can reset your insulin production, mm-hmm. you can reset how you metabolize uh, sugars. Right. So then you go to a process of eating small amounts of carbohydrates we do need them right and most breads and and grains have b vitamins in them Mm -hmm. so we do need some but you should eat less than a total of 25 grams of carb in every feeding not all day but in every feeding because that's the magic number the minute you hit 26 you stimulate your insulin and then you make fat so if you can eat 25 grams of carb or less at each feeding Okay. That's like one piece of bread is 19 grams of carb. So a plate of pasta is probably, I don't know, 75, 80, maybe 100 grams of carbs. So you have to eat a little tiny bit of pasta. Right. Lots of sauce. Sauce doesn't have a lot of carb in it. Mm -hmm. So when I talk to my patients about this, I tell them to write everything down. Right. Because then you can't mindlessly eat. Everything that passes your lips has to be written down and has to be... You have to be uh, responsible. It's a a behavioral and cognition change as well as a food change. Right. You have to become conscious of what you are eating. You you shouldn't eat in front of the TV. You shouldn't <laughs> eat while you read. You shouldn't just and and if you were trained as I was trained as a child, and I think you were trained mm-hmm. as a child to be a member of the Clean Your Plate Club, one of the most damaging things that parents <laughs> do to done. their children mm-hmm. is teach them they have to clean their plate, and and they give them all <laughs> these guilt messages. You know, your mother worked hard to fix this meal for you. You're that being was, disrespectful. That if you was don't us that. as kids. I'm not sure that we didn't do that to our children, did we? I, I hope didn't. not. I mean, but I didn't do it as a conscious act, uh, as, as a determined message. I did not want my child to have that message. What I did give my child was the message, you eat what you want to eat, and when you're done, you're done. And so you don't come back to the mm-hmm. table or you don't come back to the refrigerator in an hour and graze. You know, mm-hmm. if you're hungry, eat the food that was prepared for you. Mm-hmm. And if you're full, stop. Mm-hmm. Put cellophane over that. And if you're hungry in an hour and a half, come back and eat the rest of that. Mm-hmm. Don't go and, and get snacks. That's a very good uh, idea. Or sweets. Uh, but then the parents have to not get snacks or sweets, too. And that's the problem the children see. Yeah, see? <laughs> but I <laughs> ate all that food. I was respectful to yeah. my wife. I ate every bite she could. <laughs> yeah. So I should have more sugar. But, uh, but I, don't th- I don't think that we, this our generation told our children, who are now having children. Katie, okay, I work with a lot of families that still <clears throat> gave their kids those messages really? and, and struggle with those issues. I, you didn't. I didn't because we were conscious of it and we mm-hmm. worked on it. There are a lot of people that are still giving those messages because they're complex messages. Are you being respectful and appreciative? Do you, are you aware of how lucky you are as a child in this family or in this culture? And are you being disrespectful? You yeah. And and we throw away so much food. Uh, we cook too much food and we eat too much food, even if we're trying to eat healthy. Still, you know, eating 15 ounces of steak isn't any healthier uh, than, than eating, you know, uh, 15 ounces or something else, Mm -hmm. the volume that you eat or consume matters as well as the balance of what Mm -hmm. you eat. That's absolutely true. So what my job is, is to educate my patients about what I believe will be their best type of diet for them and how much exercise they're going to need to actually lose weight. Then balance 
replace anything that's missing like testosterone, estrogen, estradiol, um, because people who get on estrogen replacement start losing weight too. People without right. it uh, don't, except for oral estrogen. That's that's an exception. Right. Oral estrogen can make you gain weight. But I then I balance cortisol levels because a high stress level and a high cortisol level make you gain fat everywhere, like everywhere, on, even on your back, the back of your neck, belly that fat. That your hump. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. That, that has to do with a high cortisol level. And so I help manage that, suppress the production of that a little bit, and that helps people lose weight. I treat all their thyroid deficiencies. There's a thyroid problem, then I treat them. I don't treat them with the very lowest level of thyroid. I treat them to an optimal level where they can actually burn calories. Mm -hmm. And then um, we go over nutritional supplements for weight loss that if you're if you're dieting and you're not eating as much of everything, then you need to have supplements to take the place of food. And that's much less that's fewer calories, and that's much better to help all of the enzymes in your body actually click so that you can actually burn calories and make energy. So that's the part that I provide, but then I give the patient the responsibility as it is for you to be aware of everything you eat and actually change your size of your plate, eat responsibly, you don't snack all the time. Let, let's pull back. <laughs> and do another podcast on all the recommendations that, that you or I would make in terms okay. of, of medicine, psychology, and behavior for eating a more healthy diet. Uh, what, what we want to focus on today, I think we have focused on today, is the myth that testosterone replacement causes people to gain weight and make you fat. And the whole issue around uh, volume versus density mm -hmm. and the fact that if you replace your testosterone, then you have an opportunity to replace volume with density. You turn it into healthy mm -hmm. lean muscle and healthy strong bone, both of which are heavier mm -hmm. than, than unhealthy porous bone and fat. Smaller. And smaller. Uh, and then you have to complement that or support that with supplements, healthy eating mm -hmm. programs, healthy mm -hmm. exercise programs, healthy mental focus programs. So we'll come back in the next podcast and talk about those things. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BiobalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BiobalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.